Hi, my name's Andy, uh, and this is part 8 of my first Raspberry Pi game, uh, where we're trying to write a very simple game on our Raspberry Pi using Python and the Pi Game Library. Um, do have a look at the blog post, uh, where we've got all the details, all the code, uh, and a copy of the finished code uh, uh, in case you need it. So, uh, where we are at the moment is... Um, uh, we've got the, some of our game starting to take shape. Uh, we're able to show a green circle on the screen. Um, uh, and the idea of the game is that when you see a green circle, you should press a key. Um, if you see a red circle, you shouldn't press a key. Um, at the moment, we're only doing green circles, and it doesn't matter whether you press a key or not. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to um, do the first uh, kind of game-like element. We're going to um, work out... We're going to wait and work out whether or not you pressed the key um, and if you did press the key we're going to say well done and if you didn't press the key uh, we're going to say that was wrong um, <coughs> uh, yeah so um, let's flip straight to the Raspberry Pi um, and just take a quick look at what our program does I'm going to go as quick as I can today because there's lots to cover but we'll see how far we get so well, what our program does is it gets ready by, by doing this start function draws the ready screen waits for a random amount of time, about one or two seconds, um, and then it shows you a shape. And at the moment, all it does then is it ends. What we want to do is make this showing you a shape thing uh, a bit cleverer so that it actually waits for you to press something and, and then finds out whether you did. So if we look at this shape function, what the shape function does at the moment is it just draws a green shape, because that's all we currently do. So if we go up and look at the green shape function, what we're going to do, do today is make the green shape function cleverer. So instead of just drawing a green shape, it's going to draw a green shape and then wait for you uh, and then tell you how well or badly you did. So let's go straight in there. We're going to make this green shape function longer. Um, remember, when you're adding something to a function, uh, you always have to add the same number of spaces as you've got in the rest of the function. So we're doing four spaces for everything, so four spaces uh, to add this line. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this. We're going to make a new variable called pressed. And that variable is going to be filled up with the answer that comes back from a function called shape weight. So shape weight means wait while there's a shape on the screen. We haven't written that yet. We'll write that in a minute. Four spaces. Uh, and then well, now, now that pressed variable that we've just made has got the answer in. Did the, um, did the person playing the game press a key or not? So what we can do is we can decide whether that was a good thing or not. So we know we've shown a green shape because we're in the green shape function. Um, so pressing a key um, is good because it was green. So if they pressed a key, so we're writing an if statement. We're saying if pressed is true, that means if um, if they did press a key, then one, two, three, four. And we're going to indent one more because we're going to say the then part, which lives inside, uh, which is indented further. One, two, three, four. So this is all the stuff that happens if, uh, indeed, that pressed is true. What we're, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to call a function called green success, which we haven't written yet. But anyway, if they press the key, it's successful. So in a minute, we'll write a function telling them they were successful. One, two, three, four, and then else. This means anything else. If, if, if anything else other than what we asked in the first question uh, is true, then we'll do this other part. So we're always going to do one of these two parts. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, if they didn't press a key, well, then they failed. And we're going to print a message saying you failed. Okay, so we're finished, except we've got to write those functions. So the first function we're going to write um, is that shape weight function. So we're going to go up above green shape. We're going to define a new function using def, which means define a function. The function we're going to define is called shape weight. One, two, three, four. And the first thing we're going to do is something you haven't seen before. We're going to type in a description of what this function does. So what you're seeing here 
is two things at once. First of all, we're seeing the way Python lets you write strings of text that are longer uh, than just one line. And the easiest way to do that is to use this triple quote thing. What that means is um, start start a string and don't stop it until you hit another triple quote like this. It's really useful in Python for all kinds of uh, things you want to do where you want a long string which takes up multiple lines. But in particular, if we put a string like this at the beginning of a function, Python knows that that is um, the documentation for this function. That is some information telling us what that function does. And Python can show that to people who are using our functions um, at useful times. Um, uh, so uh, our other functions, most of them, the name is pretty much enough explanation. This time I felt like there was a little bit more that needed saying. Uh, so we've written that documentation string. Uh, if other people are using your functions, it's really good to have lots of documentation that explains what it does. Uh, hopefully not just a copy of the name, though. Okay, so um, now we're going to define a variable, and it's going to be a variable that looks quite familiar to you. And at some point, we're going to fix it so we only write this stuff once. But for the moment, we're going to write it again. So there's a variable called event types that cancel. Um, so these are the events that might happen things the person playing the game might do that we're interested in. So, um, they, they might press a key, or they might press the mouse, and those are the two things we're interested in. Just checking my spelling. Um, so we've seen something very similar, identical to that before, um, but yeah, for the moment this function is doing something similar but not the same as what we did before, so we we'll type it again. At some point, we're going to have to have an episode where we just tidy up stuff and make it better, but not yet. So, we're interested in those types of events. We also need to know how long we're going to wait, because this function is the function where we wait, showing a shape on the screen, until either a key's pressed or we run out of time. So, we need to know how long we're going to wait. So, how long we're going to wait is 2,000 milliseconds. We're adding a comment here. You may remember them from last time. Just some explanation that comes after a hash. Uh, hash just means ignore the rest of this. It's useful for humans, but not for the computer. Okay, so wait. Uh, the, the wait time is two seconds. So now we're going to do something else. So I'm going to type this. Finished waiting event ID equals pygame dot user event plus one. Okay, this requires a bit of explanation. Um, basically, we um, up until now we've only been dealing with events that happened. Uh, and then we responded to them. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually make an event and say uh, uh, and tell it to happen. Um, and in order to do that, you have to say what type of event it is, uh, which means we need an ID. So we're making an ID here. This is the ID of something I'm calling the finished waiting event. Um, and in Pygame, just take it on trust from me. If you, uh, you, whenever you're making your own event, you need an ID. And the ID that uh, you should use is this uh, pygame.user event value and then plus one or plus two or anything bigger than that is fine. Don't make it smaller than that um, because your ID, the type of your your event will clash with um, some events that, uh, that are inside Pygame. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. One, two, three, four. I think I explained that better in the blog post, so if you're confused, try reading the blog post. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to create an event. Um, so we're asking the pygame.time um, for its function set timer, and that set timer function says to pygame, uh, please create an event for me that will happen at a certain point in the future. And the type of event we want is this finished waiting event ID. And the time when we want it to happen is in two seconds from now. So that's why we made that variable time to wait. Um, there is a close bracket on the end there, it's just scrolling off the edge of the screen. Okay, so what we're saying to Py Pygame here is, um, in two seconds time, I want you to make up an event, a made up event that I've made, instead of uh, one of these events that's caused by someone moving the mouse or something like that. Okay, so we'll press straight on to the next bit. So now, we're in a situation where um, we need to hang around and see what events happen. Either someone's going to press a key, or click the mouse, or we're going to get this special event that we've made firing. So we know how to wait for an event. We've done this before, so um, uh, we ought to be able to do this. And again, we're going to write code that's quite similar to what we did 
uh, in lesson six and at some point we will combine them but at the moment we're going to write them separately because they're slightly different um, and it, hopefully it's easy to understand so first thing we need to know is um, what's going to be the answer that this function sends back so this function uh, sends back an answer if you remember uh, down here we told it we asked shape weight um, we're expecting shape weight to return an answer saying yes I pre yes you pressed a key or no you didn't press a key so we need to send back an answer from shape weight and the way we do that is the very last line of shape weight is going to be this it's going to be the statement the return statement which says send back an answer and the answer we're going to send back is something called pressed but we haven't made pressed yet so let's make pressed straight away one two three four pressed equals false so so far the person playing the game has not pressed a key and we're going to check whether they do in the meantime one, two, three, four, and if uh, if they press a key, uh, we'll change pressed to be true, and if they didn't, we'll leave it as false, and then this the answer from this function, the return value of this function, will be false. Okay, so how do we wait for an event? Well, we do it the same way we did it last time. Waiting equals true. So we're making a variable called waiting. Um, we're setting it to true, and then we're going to loop around. And we're going to have another while loop, and that while loop will only end when waiting becomes false. While waiting remains true, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. While waiting remains true, uh, we're going to uh, keep on repeating this next bit of code that I'm going to type. So this bit of code is again something you've seen before. What well, first thing we do is we wait for an event by calling pygame.event.wait, which means wait for something to happen. And when it does happen, put the answer of what happened into this evt variable. Um, and then we have to just check what happened. So what, what we do is we ask what the type of event is. So if the type of event was a quit event, because the person playing the game closed the window, then we quit. And we've written this quit function um, already and that will exit straight away so we don't have to worry about it anymore that's completely finished so other things that might happen else if the event type is one of the things we're interested in we made this event types that cancel variable um, if it's something we're interested in uh, it will be in that list if it's in that list what we're going to do well, what we're going to do is we're going to say we are not waiting anymore because we've had an event that we're interested in but also the event that happened was something uh, particularly interesting it was um, put someone pressing a key so that means we need to update the variable we've made called pressed to say yes that's true pressed uh, pressed uh, they did press a key so we the answer we return back is going to be true which means yes they pressed a key remember it started off as false up here so if they press a key, we set it to true, and then we send it back as the answer there. Okay, other things that could happen. If the type of this event is this new type of event that we made, called the finished waiting event ID. So what this line is saying is, if... Uh, the event that we've received is the event that we asked um, Pygame to make, the one that, that happens after two seconds, then we finish waiting. So it, uh, it, ha it, it bubbles up just the same way as these other events, uh, which is quite useful. So what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to say, right, we finish waiting, so we set waiting to false. And what that means is when we get back to this line, because we loop round and round and round this bit over and over until waiting is false. But because... Um, because we received this event, which means uh, we finished waiting, we set waiting to false, we, we drop out of the loop, and we carry on with the rest of the function, we get to this line, return pressed, and we send back the answer, which in this case is going to be false, because they didn't press a key, uh, so we didn't set pressed to true, we left pressed as false, um, but we came out of the loop, because we set waiting to false, um, because we ran out of time. So when you run out of time, we return false. When you press a key, we return true, because of this line, which sets pressed to true. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're nearly there. One last thing we need to do before we exit is if if that event that we asked Pygame to make hasn't happened yet, then we don't want it to happen now because we, we're done with it. So we don't want it to happen later and, and confuse us. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this setTimer function again 
So it's the same function as we had up here. But this time, the time to wait we're going to pass in is zero. What our Pi game happens to know that if you say call set timer with a, a zero as the time to wait, uh, it will just cancel that event and get rid of it completely. Okay, so we've finished uh, the shape wait function, which is the hardest bit uh, of today's part. Um, we have got more work to do though. Remember, there are two more functions we defined. Um, and. Uh, we, uh, well, sorry, two more functions we called so that we haven't yet defined. Those were green success and green failure. Okay, so let's write them now. These are quite short, but then they use functions that we're going to need to write as well. So, green success means, uh, well done, you did press a key when it was green, which is what you're supposed to do. So we define a function. And what that function does is it shows a green tick on the screen, which we're going to do inside a function called tick. And then, it just waits and annoyingly again it's going to wait in a way that means you can't quit or skip out of it at all which I don't like but we're just gonna to have to put up with it for now because the fix for that is gonna involve fiddling about mixing some code around so what we always do is we show a tick and, and we leave it there for two seconds and that's it that's all we're gonna do so let's do green failure same thing not the same thing almost the same thing. So if you failed because you didn't press a key when you should have done when there was a green dot, we're going to draw a cross on the screen, saying no, bad, and we're going to wait for exactly the same amount of time in exactly the same way. Uh, okay, so again, we finished, oh, except that we haven't because we haven't written these two functions, tick and cross. Okay, so these are going to look a little bit long, um, but they're actually quite simple and they mostly contain stuff you've already seen, so I'll whip through them. First thing is, when we, if we're going to draw a tick, um, we're going to need to know what colour it's going to be, so let's make a colour. That colour is going to be green for a tick, so we've made a colour. And we're going to get hold of a number which just helps us know how big things are. So find out the width of the screen, divide it by 2 and put it into a variable I've just called W. We're going to do almost the same thing for the screen height. Put it in a variable called H. Now, here's the meat of it. We're going to make a list called points. And that is going to be a list of lists. So this bracket is where the beginning of the list happens. Uh, remember, lists don't have to have uh, brackets around them, it just helps us understand what's going on. Actually, lists are made by putting commas between things. But we need brackets where we've got grouping. So in this case, we've got a list, and then inside that, we're going to have um, points. And those points are just going to be lists of two numbers. So um, hopefully this will become clear in a second. So um, this we're drawing a tick. Uh, so a tick, uh, tick kind of goes, where's my finger? Oh, a tick kind of goes like, hang on, how can I do this backwards? It goes like that. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. <laughs> goes like that. Uh, so we need to start off uh, somewhere on the left. So a little bit less than the middle of the screen. So W is about the width of the middle of the screen, but we take a little bit off it. So we're on the left of the middle of the screen. And then um, we take a little bit off H, which is at the middle of the height of the screen, to move up a little bit. So we're to the left a bit and up a little bit. Okay, uh, then our next bit, our ne the, the middle point of our tick, the bottom middle point, is going to be um, right in the middle of the screen. That's why W, we're just using W. And then a little bit down from the middle in terms of the vertical. So a little bit further down because plus means down on the screen. Okay, and then the next point is going to be um, further along to the right, but then back up. And in fact, even further up than we were at the beginning. Because that's the shape of a tick. By the way, you can have this comma or not have this comma. A Python doesn't mind. I always like to have it just in case I add some more stuff later. Okay, so one other thing to notice here, I've added a load of space here. That's just to keep my columns lined up. I like to have everything lined up, you may have noticed. Okay, so once we've got the points on our tick that we're going to draw, we just need to draw the tick. So first thing is, let's make the screen black. 
next thing is you know at some point I'm going to make a typo during this and we're going to go off to the bit at the end where I try it and it's all going to go wrong maybe that today will be the day scroll that up so you can see it okay so this uh, last number is how wide we want the line so what this function does is it's called lines it draws some lines on the screen so you say where am I drawing it on the screen what color am I drawing it well, that's the green color we made uh, false means uh, don't draw a filled in shape uh, just draw the lines and then points is uh, what are the what are all the points on the lines it, all, all the you're going to go dot 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 uh, and the the places you dot between are, the, are going to be stored in this points thing which we made up here and then 20 is how thick is the line so as with everything else once we finish drawing you do a display dot flip and we're finished so let's that was tick let's do cross it's going to be very similar so I'll try and rattle through it I know this is taking a while so make a color This time it's going to be red, um, and we're going to make the width and the W and the H like we made before. So I'll just copy that down. But this time, uh, across is a bit easier to draw. It's, it, it fits into a square, so we're just going to have the, um, the coordinates of the corners of a square. So the left of our square is going to be W minus W over three, so a little bit to the left. The right is going to be W plus W over 3, a little bit to the right. Top is going to be H minus H over 3. You see a pattern here? The bottom is going to be H plus H over 3. So these are just the edges of a square. You know how I said I like to have everything lined up? Well, I really do. Okay, so um, we're going to draw two lines. Uh, the first one is going to go from start one to end one goes from the top left to the bottom right and the next line is going to go from start to which is in the bottom left to the top right see what I mean so now start, these are start one is a point whereas left is just a number so left is an a, amount of um, horizontal, top is an amount of vertical, and then start one is an amount of horizontal and vertical, i.e. it's a point on the screen. It's actually just a list of two numbers, but a Pi game treats that as a point on the screen. So, make the screen black, if I can type, Uh, then we're going to draw two lines. So the way you draw a line is like this: pi game dot draw dot line. Where are we drawing it on the screen? What color are we drawing it? Well, this color we made, which is red. Where are we drawing it from? Start one. Where are we drawing it to? End one. How wide is it? Twenty again. Okay. Then we're doing another one. Draw a line on the screen in the color we like which is red from start 2 to end 2 width 20 and then never forget pygame.display.flip to actually show it on the screen and if I've typed all that right we have finished so let's jump to LX terminal which I've started up in the same way as I do normally and I'm going to run the program the same way we do normally. Red green dot pi dot slash red green dot pi. When I run it, it's going to show us a green dot, and we're going to press a key, and hopefully we'll see a tick. Ready? Green dot. Press a key. We see a tick. It stays for two seconds. Oh, and then waits for me to press because it's got into the end function. And we're all done. Okay, so let's try again, and this time let's get it wrong. So, ready? See a green dot, so we should press. Here it comes, there it is. Don't press anything, and we get a cross saying, very bad, you did it wrong. So, well done. We've got uh, what you might call a game with feedback for 
um, our player um, whether they've won or lost. And next time we're going to put some writing on the screen to make it a little bit easier for the person playing to understand what on earth's going on. So, see you then.